Disaster Planning and Response Art Rescue is a first responder for the world of art, providing planning, packing, evacuation, conservation, and storage for all your treasured possessions. For those of you maybe who haven't been here before, crazy people, my name is Elizabeth Alfano and you are at Fear No Art Presents The Dinner Party. So what we do here is I invite three cultural luminaries, usually artists, but sometimes people working in politics or art collectors, entrepreneurs. I bring them together and a celebrity chef makes dinner and over food and wine and chocolate and some artist performances, the conversations flow. So that sounds pretty good, but the really good part about this is that you're a part of it. So as you already know, because I can see everyone's got some food, you're eating along with us, so everything we've got upstage, you're eating as well. So you've got food from Moto tonight, very exciting. You've got wine from Domaine Vacao, and you've got chocolate coming from Vosges. So that's all really good. So I think the gift in many ways is an antidote against like, um, as a Chicagoan, I, I, it breaks my heart every time one of my heroes leaves, you know, for the, for the coasts, and I feel like if we want to retain uh, what I think is the, the greatest city in the world, we have to stay and we have to dig in. And the gift is in the neighborhood I grew up in, it's in the neighborhood I, I still live in. And in terms of your question about the intimacy and why, why is that a factor, I just get very concerned sometimes how easy it is to tune out in, in an artistic conversation between audience and an actor. And I think um, I get a little nervous that we're, we're entering an age where um, one status is kind of determined by how disaffected you can be and how kind of uh, uh, cool and removed and snarky and like the, the trending hashtag on Twitter is, is the most cutting, you know? Absolutely. And I just think uh, doing the arts in an intimate space forces us to confront that we're all, it's unavoidably clear that we're all human beings in one room together tonight. And, uh, and I think that's important. All right, so, okay, good, thanks. And she said, have you ever considered administration, artistic administration? I said, what is that? Yes, right. No one ever told me that yeah. you could make a career doing what I do now. And, yes. and I was, at that point, a junior in college. And tell people what it is exactly that you do, because it is a lot of work. <laughs> uh, uh, so, Andreas, uh, who's very disappointed that he couldn't be with you all I here tonight. I think Andreas is on Vicodin, so I don't know how disappointed yeah, it's, it's, he is Yeah, it's one moment. of those. I hope he's still <laughs> unconscious for, for the surgery that he just underwent. Um, so he's the impresario. He will program uh, the works that the company will do. He's largely involved in casting, identifying the creative teams, directors, designers, uh, and the singers involved. And generally, once he's decided who he wants, it's my job to find that person, negotiate their salaries, negotiate with the unions, contract them, fly them here, find their accommodations, build their rehearsal schedules, see that they're comfortable throughout the entire, see that the company has enough money to then pay for their flights and their hotels and their fees. Um, so there's the, there's the visionary aspect behind it, uh, which Andreas is largely a part of, and then there are those of us, the administrators, that have to implement each yes. and every one of those decisions, and we have to do it with no money. Yes, right. uh, a, a great deal of support, at least you know, an outpouring of love for what we do, but it doesn't always translate into dollars. So. And you also oversee marketing, right? Yeah. The I reason mean, I ask, we have a great tweet from you, a tweet from Mrs. Menton 3. And Mrs. Menton 3, you are going to Chicago Opera Theater. I have your tickets. Come find me after the show. <laughs> Two more tickets for you. She wants to know, so since you oversee marketing and basically the vision of what you do to the outside world, how do you change the perception that art is luxury, particularly opera? Aha. Uh, That's great. Yeah. She, she earned her tickets. Uh, I think a lot of it comes to this idea of, of relevance and also uh, art appreciation is a great thing. But when you're talking about theater, be it straight theater, opera, anything in between, I think we need to start steering away from the idea that coming to a three-hour opera is akin to going to a museum and standing in front of a Renoir for three hours, where your takeaway is, well, isn't that beautiful? 
and then you leave and you go to the next painting and you stand in front of it and you think, boy, that's, that's just beautiful. There needs to be more than that. Connection, you mean? Yes. Yeah. Yes, yeah. Right. With, yeah. I mean, we Dialogue. need to get people talking. We need to get right. them thinking. Yeah. We need yes. to maybe, maybe offend someone. Uh, maybe maybe right. start with some provocative uh, element on stage that you know, might provoke someone off the top to say, oh, I, I just hate that. I can't believe you made that decision. And then, uh -huh. and then when you ask them why, now you've got a conversation I'd want to be a part of. Right, so if there's anything you don't like, tonight is your night to ask yeah. him for sure. I don't, it's, art for art's sake is, is fine, but it's not enough. I mean, if art is the medium that is used to get a child interested in math, Great. Mission yeah, accomplished. Right, yeah. If it's the right, medium yeah, used yeah. to get them uh, jazzed up and talking about anything, anything yes, can the yes. kids to talk about. Would it, I mean, isn't that part of what we're out here to do? I always think that art is just a, a way for you to reconnect with yourself. And once you mm -hmm. reconnect with yourself, you are then in a position to connect with others. Mm -hmm. And I think the disconnection that we see everywhere isn't really people from each other, it's people from themselves. Mm -hmm. And then when you have a disconnected individual, you have nothing to really work with. So art is just sort of bringing people back to themselves, answering these sort of life questions. This is what I love about the Seldons, is that they really tackle sort of intellectual life questions as opposed to being just sort of, you know, yeah. Dance for dance sake. When I saw Rain Man, I wanted to be a crazy autistic <laughs> mathematician. When I saw Sister Act, I wanted to be a nun. I mean, you know, I said, <laughs> it was, you know, whatever, through the movies, through film, through, right. through uh, art and theater, I mean, it often put my crazy mind on the path of what I thought I wanted to be. Patch Adams wanted to be a doctor and a clown, <laughs> a clown doctor. So we have a little bit of feel of what it's like to run a big organization. Even though it's, it's hard to run Chicago Opera Theater, you do have people. You are, you are indeed an organization. But you guys are sort of yourselves, basically. I'm the people. You're the people, right. Yeah, I know all about that. I know how that goes. So tell me some of the trials and tribulations of running a small organization, and then you've made such impact in what you've done. Well, it's stamina mm, yeah. and um, just tenacity and um, a lot of hours. And a willingness to, you know, I, I wear a lot of different hats and I wear a lot of different. When, um, I was thinking about this and, you know, thinking back to one of the site specific works that we did, we did a, um, a piece called Convergence in 2009 in a big truck garage. And, um, you know, I, I just happened upon this garage because I lived above it. And, um, and so I knew the space, and I thought something has to happen in this space. But the space really needed a lot of cleanup. And, you know, site-specific works, really a lot of, they're, so the, they're the most labor, because mm -hmm. you are essentially making a theater in a different sort of place, whether it's a yeah. pool or whether it's a garage. Yeah. And so I'm telling you, you know, we were, we were um, um, you know, pressure washing. God. And at one point when I was standing actually inside of a garbage bin, like jumping up and down to like, you know, I thought, this is so glamorous. <laughs> this is, you know, this is the artistic director role that I've chosen. And, um, you know, I, I wouldn't necessarily have set up to have done that. I wanted to make dances. And then you right. get this other thing, and you just have a vision, and so you just follow that. Right. We've right. all stood in garbage cans for art before. Well, it's funny because they talk about art being you think luxury. I'm joking, but I'm not <laughs> joking. I know you're not joking. I know you're not joking. You're knee deep in the garbage, yeah. I'm sure. And there's so much non-luxury to the arts, really. You've got to be sort of a slave to work in a way. I mean, do you feel that way that you're a slave to, to just pushing through? Um, I mean, I love it. I wouldn't change a thing about our growth or our trajectory. Uh, How I do, many years have you been? We're there? in our eleventh year right now. Oh, yeah. I didn't realize you were that old. Yeah, um, we you know we've just hired our first part-time employee. Our, our board is growing. We've hired our first major PR firm ever. Wow. Uh, but it, it's constant, as you know. And we call it jokingly the gift that keeps on taking. Um, <laughs> but to me, that the moment where I knew we were going to be okay was when a bum was sleeping in our vestibule. And another bum came along and woke him up, and he goes, hey, man, you can't sleep here. This is our local theater house. <laughs> and, uh, so if, 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 you can, if you can kind of get that message to the homeless, I think you're, uh, you're going to be good. But we hear that all the time. You know, I never even knew I liked theater. Those right. are the people that stick around. You know, every year we read probably 200 to 300 plays wow. at The Gift. We find the plays that we know how we can do them, who would be casting them, how it would work well in our space. We think we can knock out of the park. We never choose those plays. 
We always choose the plays. We have no idea how we can possibly pull off. If it'll work, who's going to get cast? That terrifies us and we can't look away because then I feel like people will be more amenable to come on that journey with us because we're just as scared as they are. And wow, that's amazing that they choose what they know that. Because again, so much of being an active participant in life is being sort of alive and you're forcing yourself to not be asleep at the wheel, mm. to not do the things that you know you could knock out of the park, as you say. Right. But a terrifying journey. How do you communicate that to people that like, come with us, we have no idea what we're doing. Come on. Our tagline for the theater is come closer. Uh -huh. And yes. we yes. ask them to, we, we promise you we will put ourselves through emotional and physical hell and heaven. Uh, and say something true about what we've been going through as artists through this piece. If you'll meet us halfway and come in this space, that's a little uncomfortable for you. Uh -huh. And out of that terrible dissonance comes a beautiful friction, I think. I, I'm just so excited. So all of us are going to the gift theater, right? Mm -hmm. A big group of us, everybody going to the gift. I'm not kidding, so, yes. So even looking at some of the Academy Awards, again, that were up last night, you know, a lot of those, and I wonder how you feel about this, a lot of those people, some of them were untrained actors. And they just were sort of plucked from the bakery across the street from the production lot. And so you think you worked so hard in training, and then the baker next door gets this Academy Award part. Well, I think act, acting is not a thinking person's profession, you know, and I, and I, and I, and I don't mean to be insulting on, uh, in that. I mean, right I, on. What does I, that mean? I think for, I don't really care about your erudite choice of this character that's, that's an allegory for the fall of the Berlin Wall. Like, show, show me what you love, you know? I, I yeah. think you're just... for passion. Yes, you're, I mean, yes. you have yeah. to lead with your heart as an yes. artist, you know? Yes. Not discounting the, the dramaturgy, that that's not important. It is, but first and foremost, I don't think people pay 30, 60, 75 dollars a ticket to go see someone be in control and smart and comfortable. Right. I think we want to be taken yes. on a ride, right. you know? Yes, yes, yes. I have no idea what the original question was. <laughs> <laughs> and I can promise you that after you do this, you're never going to forget it. It's probably something you've never done before. And if you're going to step outside the box and address these big social issues, you really have to take it as far, you know, as entertainment can go. And well, that's really what we have here. It's a very entertaining experience. Um, and, you know, at the same time, we're having fun addressing these social problems. Yeah, and that's why I bring you to the table with a bunch of artists, because you're reinventing things. I mean, how many times has the fall of the House of Usher been done? And you've got to bring it, you've got to reinvent it to something else. So, you know, a pork sandwich has been done a gazillion times, but never exactly like this. And so you're reinventing that and sort of bringing an artistic element to it all together. Well, I have a tweet for you, and of course I have gazillion, but my team is only picking one for you. Does your, ex oh, uh, at J Durkin, nice for you because you're getting cooking classes at Ing Restaurant, which hey. is his secondary restaurant after Moto. So uh, nice for you that you're going to get in on that. Uh, see me after. Does your expanding footprint, Ing, TV shows, etc., affect your ability to engage in the creative process? Um, no, I would say that uh, the more things that I'm involved in, the more creative we have to be. Right. Um, I would think that's true. Simply because. You know, I'm a firm believer that if we know how to get rid of sugar from the human diet with this product, it's time to quickly move on to another product and, you know, address fat or address, you know, high cholesterol, things like that. And so we, we tend to jump from project to project pretty quickly uh, because, we, you know, we don't want to aid uh, rest on our laurels and we, we want to continue to innovate.